This is a really exciting section. In this section, we're going to walk through how to work with APIs in Ruby. So right here, I have started with a application that I built for this, uh, just for this course, uh, called RESTy. And what it is, RESTy, short for RESTful Interfaces for Routing. and it's a very basic API. It simply has posts and it makes the posts available via JSON. It has an ID, title, description, and then a URL. And so what we're gonna do through the next four videos is be able to see different ways that we can interact with this application. And we're also going to use uh, Stack, uh, the Stack Exchange API and show you how to interact with another one, just to show you I didn't make it too easy for us. So that's what we're going to do. The very first video right now, I'm gonna show you a very basic way to interact with this API. So let's switch over to the terminal and I'm gonna create a file. So I'm gonna say touch and API example.rb and let's open this up in sublime okay now there are a lot of different ways working with apis i'm going to show you a very popular gem for working with them instead of building a bunch of our own code that could be very buggy uh, i'm going to show you one of the most popular gems for when you want to bring in api data so if you remember we first need to require Ruby gems, because we're bringing in a specific gem. And now we want to require HTTP party. And once again, if you remember back to our gem episode, if you want to install this, you simply have to do gem install HTTP party. And then once you do that, you'll be able to require it just like I'm doing right here. Okay, I'm gonna change the tab size and now let's create a class for handling our uh, our call to the API so I'm gonna say class and edutectional resty because that's the application that I'm gonna be calling and first we want to include the HTTP party module so I'll say include HTTP party and next we can, because we're including this, we have access to one of the methods. And one of those methods is called base underscore URI. And that's uh, just the URI that we're going to be calling for the API. If we switch back to the browser, we can see that it's edutectional dash resty dot slash post slash JSON. We don't need this part yet. We're gonna add that in later. So let's just pull this in and it takes it as a string and we can get rid of this. So this is the base URI that we're going to be using for this API call. So now we simply can create a method. So let's create a method called posts and create a, uh, or call an instance of this post. So I'm gonna say self, dot class get and now what I want to get is coming back here we want to grab this posts dot json so let's grab this extension here put it in as a string so this is the API endpoint that we're going to be calling end and end so this is all we have to do to be able to grab all of these elements so grabbing them is one thing let's also create an instance of this class and then print it out so i'm gonna say edutectional underscore resty so i'm gonna create a variable and then create a instance of this class edutectional resty and make sure this matches up so you could just copy and paste it right here and new so this is going to create a new instance of the class and then say puts edutectional underscore resty and posts and the reason we can call posts right here this is simply calling the posts method so let's do this and see if this is working so come over to the terminal type in ruby api example hit return 
and it's going to contact the API. You see it took a second to do it because it needed to go to the internet and get it. But look at that. It grabbed both of those elements. You can see we have test blog post and then testing production, SMS sending. And look at that. We have both of those. We have the title, description, ID, and URL. So great job. If you went through that, you now know how to contact an API. This was a base case. Now we're going to start to get into some of the more advanced ways of doing it. In the next video, it's going to be a quick video on showing how we can actually shortcut a few of the things we did and make our code even more efficient.